So, <laughs> the weather has brightened up since our, our cardio walk. Yeah. And oh, yes. Day. So, uh, let me put this in the pool first. Woo! Nice I day, know. Right, yeah, I know. So, as I mentioned earlier, we were having a, a hurricane category one coming in. So me and Ali have to put all the patio chairs and, and furniture in here and the house. So now Ali's left. Yeah. And she's given me and Dave, Dave thinks he's getting, he's getting <laughs> rid of this, the task of putting it all together. All right, I'll help. <laughs> all right, you tell me where it goes. That's going all the way up there, so we'll probably do that last. Okay. We'll move it out the way. You know I used to own a moving company? Did I tell you that on the... And the yes, you did. I did. So, I think that's, in life, I think there's a stat where they say that moving is one of the most stressful things people can do. Oh, tell me about it. Um, yeah. I mean, I've moved so many times and I've moved so many people that it doesn't really bother me. What really? Does? No. Oh. I love that. So, it's just, uh, I think the hardest thing would be the memories you leave, you know? Yeah. Or pianos, pianos down the stairs if you have to move that. Oh, you know, I've had a few people when I turned up. I used to go there the week of the move, and I would say I go there with my, you know, my little uh, pad and make notes of what was going to come out. And there'd always be one person who'd slipped in an item. It was always a piano. Yeah, of course. Because I wouldn't touch a piano. I wouldn't touch a couple of things, but a piano was. Yeah, you break your back like though. Well, you know, you move something of that intricacy. Yeah. They're going to blame you for... If uh, you break it, yeah. But yeah, I've, I've moved... Uh, I'd say in the years that I had my company, uh, a few hundred people. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, That's I, hard work, man. You make, were you making good money with that? Yes. Oh, good. I made... Uh, enough money to pay off my business within the first quarter wow that's the van i then had uh, at one point in time seven staff working with me wow what it taught me was to be um a real businessman yeah listen to the client also the client is always right if you wanted something um to be moved and it wasn't in the right spot it was never like, oh my gosh, you told me it was there. Yeah. And yeah. it was always, yes, no problem. And if they wanted to move to the right spot again, yeah. and the guys that I had working for me were all bodybuilders. Oh, they looked the part. So imagine turning up at your house. I'd pull up in my van, we all had our uniforms. And if we had to be, you know, groomed, no beards, I'm breaking the rule now. <laughs> and uh, I had these big guys turning up. You feel secure, right? Yeah, you feel yeah. safe, these guys can do the job. Yeah. And we all look good too, you know? Nice. See if I can get this I can I can grab one hand. You got? Yeah. Whoa! You don't have. It. <laughs> so yeah, it was a lot of fun. I grew that company. Um, I won a couple of young businessman the awards. You won a couple of awards? Yeah. Wow. How old were you when you had it? How old? I started when I was in college, and I grew it out to the college. I won um, an award of. Uh, Prince Charles, um, I, young, I won Young Businessman of the Year twice. Wow. I had a, a KEF scholarship, it's called KEF scholarship. And I literally grew that business from a lot of people, again, just like bodybuilding, not yeah. believing. They thought uh, I was uh, overly committing myself to, to something that I really didn't know. Yeah. But I felt that I'd done enough the diligence. I had a great business plan. And also there was, in my small town, which doesn't have a lot of money, there was a market for small haulage. Not the big trucks. Yeah, yeah. Nobody was doing like the, the U-Haul size vans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ended up getting um, a U-Haul size van. I started marketing to uh, a different, um, you know, economic price point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's how I, I managed to start killing it, mate. Wow. Um, and all these other moving companies who had fleeced people over the years, charging them so much money on these small houses and they wouldn't even fill maybe a quarter of these big vans. Yeah, yeah. I then could come in 
and I could charge per load. And my guys uh, went down in dust, they would be doing like three houses a day. Wow. And they still go to the gym. Wow. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Wow. Did you sell it the company or you just closed it? What did you do with it? I saw, I had contracts with the NHS, which is the National Health Service. Um, and I was crazy to get that. 20 years old, I was getting paid by the NHS. Wow. To move, literally, they wanted a bed, move from one hospital to the next. And I, me and my crew would do it and I'd get paid. Wow. The problem was you have to invoice them. It came a month later, but they pay you. Yeah, yeah. But you know, um, and then I had contracts with the local council. So when I came to America, I could have sold my contracts, but I, I could I would have sold them to the people that didn't deserve them. Yeah. For myself, if you want them, work for them. Yeah. Because they were never offered to these companies before. So uh, I didn't end up. I just kept my my van, sold my. Um, certain assets off yeah but the company name i just i didn't i dissolved it okay so i went out with a van you know yeah yeah so i didn't i didn't um again i didn't want to sell the the company that i worked so hard yeah for yeah it was worth something to you yeah. yeah so they could trash my name though. yeah exactly and plus it was like a sort of like a a plan b yeah yeah in case body willing to work out yeah but in my mind, it was always going to work out. Yeah, yeah. And see, Dave, remember when you and I met? I, I had the company then. Yeah, yeah. When you and I met first. <laughs> That's crazy. So. Uh, you were business savvy early on. That's rare. So just like Jay, yeah. Fourteen. I That's had my crazy. Wow. Yeah, I used to sell. When we were talking on sell uh, thin shits. That's sell awesome. Thin shits. Then I got into uh, pirates, and by the age of 19, I was I had my own moving company. Wow. I was a young guy. I had, my, I had a paper round, a, a paper round that I, that I had. Newspaper, for a years. yeah, yeah. And what I'd done was, at a young age, you know, paper round has pretty much like a shelf life. Yeah. Guys would do it maybe, what, a couple of years. And I realized the older guys were coming to their end of their rounds. And I said, listen, when you get it, when you're coming to the end of your rounds, let me have the round. So I took the rounds and I soaked it back to somebody else. And I took a cut of the top. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you True go. True story. Yeah. So I was making money without doing anything. That's I right. realized, man, make money in your sleep is what you need to do. <laughs> so I... That's smart. So when I got into bodybuilding, even as an amateur, I said... So I came to the US, I was like, if I'm leaving a business, I've got to treat this as a business. That's right. So I had two contracts before I even turned pro. One was uh, with Gaspari. Yeah. And one was with uh, Weeder. Yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, so. Crazy that's it. times, right? That's it. Crazy times. Uh, Right. And it's amazing to say that I, I was uh, I was coming into the store back then. And, yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna help you ha give you a hand with the rest. I'm done, man. You are done? Yeah. Look. I, th I thought there was some look, stuff in the house. Look behind you. Yeah. All we gotta do is put the pillows on. Okay. Move, move pretty much move the table and the chairs. Up okay. To the top, so. There you go. And then put the umbrellas. So that's the backyard. That's it. That is it. Awesome. It's what is playing? It's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. You're putting me. You're putting me to work. Look at him. For all those meals I've been eating. I'm, I'm putting him to work. <laughs> Little does he know that I'll be sending him an invoice after this okay. too. Full time mover now. That's right. You have to change your your handle. There you go. <laughs> How did I do two chairs to your one? <laughs> I know you're you're stronger than me. Just gotta put the table now. Coming together. Can you do that on your own? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put it here. Actually, let's see if we can. Me and you can film. Okay. Picking it up. Oh, she's 
thought. <laughs> Has to be perfect. There you go. Oh. Final final product. I had to do this whilst it was starting to rain. I was like, oh, nothing's going to happen. And Ali was like, well, I don't know. You know, it could change with this Florida. I was like, yeah. Oh, bloody hell. So that's, I done that on my own. So that's, a lot, that's a lot of, peepers, a lot of pieces. Beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. You sure you don't want to get on the back of that uh, unicorn and I'm have to good. push you around? I'm good. At... <laughs> that's good for uh, that's good for uh, Addy though. Addy loves it. Yeah, I bet. That thing when we bought that, I thought it was going to be a lot smaller. Yeah, right. But it's when a... he blew it up, it was no joke. It's a good thing. Good thing you have a big pool. But we have. We've had a. We've, that unicorn, as much as this stunner, it's seen better days. We've had a lot of play out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Every day awesome. during quarantine. Yeah. That's probably deflated because of my ass jumping on top of it. <laughs> oh, I gotta bring that table up to it, actually. Come on, guys. Oh, okay. oh that's right. Now it's finished. No. Now it's finished. There you go. Good job. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Until the next tropical storm hurricane. There you go. All right. Complete. Um, yeah. yeah. You had the beef. The two beef in a row. Yeah. How many good. times do you have beef per day? I normally have chicken this meal. So I've, I've nuked the wrong meal. Nice. So I'll have this later. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's just an excuse there, Frank, so I don't have to eat for another So you get six meals per day right now? Yeah, and then uh, a shake. So seven, that's yeah. total seven, okay. Yeah. So you, will you do two chicken, two beef, two salmon? Is that how you do it? Two or? chicken, um, two chicken, two, two beef, one salmon. Um, and what, no, it's actually six meals right now, it's gonna be seven. Okay, Yeah. I'm so one shake? Yeah, Okay. one shake. Uh, actually, what am I talking about? It's seven meals. I'm so sorry. It's my first meal is a shake, greens. That's right. Yes. And then um, it's not a, a solid meal. And then the rest is five five solid meals and then an additional shake. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's, uh, what time is your last meal? It all depends. You know, at the moment I'm eating... I'm trying to get my last meal in... Um, about an hour before I go to sleep. Okay. Try to. Yeah. But most recently it's been so late. It all depends on what happens in the day. Yeah. Again with quarantine. Mm -hmm. And me and Ali having to juggle the baby. Uh, I'm getting my meals in, my last meal in as late as like 12 at night sometimes. But if I'm awake, I'm eating. So yeah. if I'm still awake at, 12, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to have something. Okay. So that's like meals with them. And in the past, which then might, might happen, even when I was moving up from a 2 or 2 to 2.12, mm -hmm. uh, I was having to get up in the middle of the night to eat, just to get that weight on my frame, yeah. to go up from a 2 or 2, 2 or 2 to top of the class to 2.12. Gotcha. So I got a feeling as the weeks go on, Neil might actually start throwing that in the yeah. next too. Wow, what and happened? Then, I don't know. <laughs> Ghost. <laughs> yeah, so let's check in right now. Dave over there, he's eating. What do you got, Dave? What are you eating? So this is actually one Ali's meal because it's very tasty. <laughs> she tells me, she says, you know, I have meals that are much better than his. <laughs> More tasty. Mine are like plain Jane. Yeah, that's right. All of them. Look, this is yes. this is as plain as they get. Check this is one of the rice, reasons why beef and rice. I love salad. Mega Fit. They they make it to my spec, of course. You've seen the steak. Um, steak. So these are thawing out. From earlier, yeah, show me the salmon. Yeah, salmon is my meal. It'd be thrown apart, but yeah. yeah, this is miso salmon with jasmine rice, snap peas. It's got a miso sauce on top. I'm uh, and that's my signature series. Right? Yes, the that's mega right. Fit. Yes, it's a, it's a great meal. When um, uh, myself and the mega fit meal guys got together about doing a signature series dish, they asked me what one of my favorite meals were to eat, and one meal always comes to mind like that's I, I eat. It's sort of on the diet, but a little bit off. It's the uh, uh, miso salmon that is in the Cheesecake Factory. Wow. Oh, it's my favorite. 
And I said to the guys, I was like, this is what I like. So they ended up um, putting something together, just just working on the sauce, working on the sauce, then trying to make that as, as local as possible. Yeah. And they've knocked it out the park. I mean, that, that meal is tremendous. Does Neil have you eat a lot of fish when you prep us? You know, sometimes people have to eat a ton. I remember Jay eating like a pound of fish and he was calling yeah. it fish life. Yeah. Do you have to eat a lot of fish as you prep or no? Over the years, we've we've done a variety of different things. I've eaten a lot of tilapia. Um, I've eaten a lot of turkey. Um, last year's prep, I would say 2018 was my best look. We kept an abundance of, of a variety of different things in. We didn't just switch it to fish. Oh, I think good. on the on the depletion, we might have a little bit more fish meals. Okay. A little bit more white fish, tilapia mainly. Okay. But um, you don't need fish all the time out. to get in shape. That's a no, myth, right? That's no. what I heard. Yeah. A lot of people will use um, again that that tool to get dry. You have to eat fish, yeah. fucking cardio, and diet. Yeah. Uh, and training in in combination will will make you look the way you look. Yeah. I mean. Um, you know, some people put ketchup on their food, some people don't. There's so many different yeah, yeah. varieties of why I didn't get in shape that you can use as an excuse. Some people, oh, I didn't do it because this year I, I didn't use fish or, you know, I, I used, uh, I, I had more steak than I've ever had and mm-hmm. it affected my condition. It's like, no, that's BS. You know, the work is done um, when it needs to be done. The food is there as a fueling force. Does fish have a, a, a maybe a little bit of an edge over steak yes of course but when you're restricting everything down um that steak meal is there maybe for a purpose yeah. it's there for it, it's its own benefits fish is it is as uh, bland as it comes yeah and bland food makes dieting hard dieting hard makes the feeling that you're going to get a new crazy conditioning yeah you know so if you're not feeling the diet six weeks out from a show, um, and I can tell you what I was eating six weeks out from a show, and that was one meal of salmon a day, one meal of steak a day, um, and the rest was chicken. And I was feeling the diet, I was sucking it in, and I was in great condition. Yeah. So, and I did, we didn't pull, pull anything out, and that's what we do. We keep everything out. Neil believes in a full abundance of uh, nutrients from different pathways. I think that's into the key. show. yeah. And also, it just gives you, as a bodybuilder, something to look forward to. You know, it's like, oh, yes. You know, we all, all had that feeling of, yes, next meal is yeah. salmon. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but, but no, you, no, when, you're, yeah, when you are fighting that, that single digit number. You're, you're looking like, for the little things, oh, the little like, pleasure yeah, in life. to eat this. And, <laughs> you know, you look forward to your shakes. Now, when you're in the off season and you're fat and happy. It's just, oh my gosh, that next meal. But when you're close to the show, it's like, oh, I can't wait to eat that meal. Yeah. So I'm at that stage where I'm like, oh, soon, <laughs> soon I'll be like, okay, I can't wait. There you go. So this is 10, 10 ounces of chicken. Again, with rice. Nice. I don't cook it in the pan like Jay. Maybe that's, uh, the, maybe that's the secret. You saw that. Yeah, of course. Jay cooks everything in the pan. So maybe that's a secret. <laughs> with Ali, some... some with, yeah, with With some, uh, some sea, sea salt. Yeah, sea, sea salt, salt yeah. yeah. So... That's funny. Didn't Jay have his own scissors at one point? I was just going to tell you yeah, this morning. He was going to... Yeah, a cuddler scissor. Because he was, you know, always cooking his chicken on the... I thought so. On the camera and all that stuff. Yeah. I think um, he's got a couple of... Uh, couple of pairs at the house but he never actually did the he didn't he didn't he didn't go ahead it's, with the project didn't it split off Why i don't it, know a, a fork, uh, like a knife or something yeah i don't know i, know. I, I remember know. the a couple I, years ago. I remember the scissor project yeah. yeah yeah one thing i will say about jay is he he's a hustler man anything yeah. that <laughs> is based around his lifestyle that he can just add in and change his life and possibly others he's, he's trying to put his hand into yeah. it so that was a, obviously a great uh, great idea to do the uh, the scissors oh look who's here oh, there you go yeah exactly they hear the they scissor know. click they, 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 they come, yeah yeah they come over that's funny oh yeah there you go bodybuilding dog yeah all right time to eat 
What? Daddy. Say, say, say it. Daddy's so boring. Daddy's what? Oh. Daddy's boring. Daddy's boring? Oh my god. <laughs> we done? Wait, what? Look at that cute little there's always, chair. There's always a comeback. Look at that cute little chair over there. Oh, that's what chair? Oh, this one? I know. That's it's mine. That's yeah, that's it's so tiny. Oh my gosh, how <laughs> good are the legs? Something just hit my head. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, look, this is what me and Dave caught. Me and the blades. Hold your hands up. No, no, no. Yes, I promise. I promise. No, no, no. What do you promise? Come here, come here, I promise. She's gone. Your dad is gonna be No, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, 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 this is a calorie burner. Give me something. What? Wait, 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 wait. Hey, do you wanna do you wanna go to the pool later and show? Another one. Yeah, you wanna show how you gonna show me how you swim? No, I'm gonna see how I go to the wall and swim down. Swim down. You're gonna die. You're gonna like this. Oh, okay. Awesome. See that you can there? go all the way down to the bottom. Yeah. You can hold your breath. I'm yeah. gonna get from a toy and drive in a. Bring it up. Wow. Show camera, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Around the world. I'm gonna be on that. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna eat my food first. <laughs> oh, yeah. You put that in their head now. <laughs> you guys see what I'm having to deal with, you know? Not only do I have to deal with uh, Alice and Lewis in the in there, I have to deal with our offspring. <laughs> on the daily. You're lucky. Um, I'm yes, you're lucky. I'm lucky. <laughs> she keeps me on my toes. Both of them. <laughs> Alright. Oh shit. This is a there it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not uh, Jay Cutler's uh, trophy cabinet or trophy room, shall I say. But I'm working uh, to uh, certainly fill up the trophy uh, display. Uh, I've got more in the UK. All my amateur trophies are in the UK. Yeah. But of course, oh, these are my pride of place. Uh, and every one of these trophies are significant, of course. Uh, for variable reasons, everyone has a story. Everyone has uh, their ups and their downs. But every one of these trophies, I can sit back and and literally be like, oh, I remember that that prep, you know, and, and just uh, be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I I got through that type of thing. And I look at the next trophy, it's like, oh my gosh, remember that happened? Every one of these trophies has that story. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Which one has the best story? Which prep has the best story? Which prep has the worst story or the toughest one? Oh, is that a good question? It's a great question. Which one has the? Well, I'll go with the worst first. Yes. So that would have been. So if you look at the the trophies, you're, that was the first Olympia. That was the second, and then they went to the cups yeah. after that. Um, so it would have been the 50th year, which I believe is 2014. I was really battling major stomach issues and, um, oh, it was, it was food allergies, which I didn't know I had oh. throughout the entire prep. Really? Like literally food was not digesting. Um, I had like really bad inflammation on my stomach so any type of exercise where I would put my, my yeah. stomach on the pad yeah it, it just felt like I swore a pepper you know just that yeah. pain and I really fought hard for that prep how did you fix it on you, that stage did you have to go see the doctor or well initially we we got through the prep and um that was the year that it was like I said the 50th year 
Joe Vegas um, was was there in presence. Eduardo Correa probably looked the best he'd ever looked, and him and I were going for it. It was, it was like toe to toe for pre-judging, and I was just in so much pain that backstage I had athletes around me who could see my discomfort. Guy Sistanino being one of them, that mm -hmm. was training training anything to to help me. I remember being backstage lying there, chilled out, because I like to find a corner and throw myself with the people I want to be around. Guy is one of them, because him and I just bust balls. And we're lying there and Guy's like, is that your stomach? And I was like, holy shit, yeah it is. It sounded like somebody was tipping a two litre bottle upside down and you know that gas, the yes. egg was, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes. that's what it sounded like. Wow. And I stood up and literally my stomach just swore up. <laughs> And I text Neil, I was like, Neil, I'm freaking out back here. And I remember security was nuts that year. No coaches could go backstage. Yeah. So I went to that pipe and drape curtain. Yeah. It was like the Wizard of Oz. I'm, I'm one side, Neil's the other. Like security wouldn't go in through. And I said, coach, mate, my, my stomach is, 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 I'm in a lot of pain here. So he was like, you're okay. He stuck his head around and he was like, and he says like, oh, and he's caught himself like, we, we, we'll take care of this. So we, we walked around the back yes. of the expo, you know yes. all that dead space? Yes. Um, where they put all the vendor stuff. Mm -hmm. We're walking around like with my hands in my air, trying to release this pressure that I built up. And I, I they were standing calling the 212 guys. And if you watch the video back, which I, I've only watched it once, um, I couldn't hit any type of lat spread, front of a bicep, anything condensed, yeah. I could do. Or anything when I took that air into my yeah, diaphragm, yeah. it was in so much pain. Um, and, I, and I knew that show I was fighting, the first time I ever f felt like I was fighting for that first place. Oh, wow. And so that was probably the worst I've ever felt on stage, the worst I've ever mentally uh, battled with them emotions of, you know, am I going to win? I, mean, I feel yeah. like I'm losing, you know? Yeah. But then for the finals, we came back, we addressed the issue, and uh, obviously I ended up winning that, and it was an amazing battle with Eduardo. Um, but after that, we went to seek some medical help to see what it was, and we found out it was a slew of food allergies. Wow. Yeah, we done all the Western treatment, and then all the, like, uh, we checked internally, make sure I was healthy. They all give you a pat on the back and said, you're healthy as can be. Yeah. So it didn't leave us, it, in one sense, we walked away like, okay, we know that we're, we're very healthy. And yeah. I pride myself on looking after my body throughout my career, even before in bodybuilding, but I was playing rugby. <clears throat> but that didn't give us the answer to address the, the situation. Yeah. So Ali, my wife being a nutrition dietitian, she found uh, a doctor that specialized in not just Western medicine, but in Eastern medicine too. So we done a food allergy test. And he came back and pretty much like 90% of the food I was eating, I was allergic to. Wow. And we changed it literally on that Monday. And I can do that. You see how clean I eat all yeah. the time. So it's maybe, say that was like a, a Saturday or a Friday. Come the next day, I was, I, everything that came up as a red flag, took it all out and I started my new, wow. my new diet. It took a couple of months, um, but you could see the change. Wow. Um, there was no inflammation. There was no pain. Um, so I started that next prep out. With a, with a vengeance, I wanted to make sure that there was no room for error, and that was then number four, which is 2015. So I would say that was my worst prep. Yeah. And I, like I, Neil said earlier when we spoke to him, everyone has a story. You yeah. Know? But I feel that was the only one when I was, I was thinking, wow, I, I could lose this, and it's yeah. out of my hands. It wasn't because I didn't prep. Yeah. It wasn't because I missed any cardio sessions. It yeah. wasn't because I missed meals, training sessions. It was because of something I ate that gave me a reaction. It was crazy. But I would say, what was the other question? The best? Best, prep? best or smoothest breath, let's say. 2018. Yeah, the last one. 2018, I was a machine. I wanted to shut up all these little <laughs> kids that were talking. <laughs> you know, I gave everybody a chance to step on stage in 2018. And uh, for everyone that was running their guns, saying that they were going to take, take me out, and I was maxed out and I was done and you know I said <laughs> you know bring it and I just felt great throughout the entire prep I enjoyed my prep it was hard I had to dig deep to get into that and it was you know very tiresome especially on the last one to, to really suck it in 
but every day I felt like, wow, this is this is the last time I'm going to step on stage at the 212. And it was just that excitement that I didn't have with any other prep. And I knew that I was going to be bringing my best. You wanted to go out with a bang. Yeah, uh, uh, well, right. the bang. Yeah. And obviously, you know, that's the year, 2018 was a year where people started saying they wanted to ski me up in the open class more than ever. Yeah. Because yeah. that year, um, Phil lost to, to Sean. Sean. Yeah. And, you know, um, it would have been great to even have a... Com- that one of them cheeky pictures at the end of the show when everybody goes back up on stage to pause. I really would love to see myself next to Sean in, in my condition. I knew obviously that never happened, yeah. but it also has left that now uh, that narrative of, of what can I look like yeah. if I have some time off. So yeah, I would say 2018 was a, was a phenomenal year. All the, the, the dots, you know, lined up and was clicking and it just, yeah, yeah it just clicked you know that yeah. you know what i mean yeah. everything clicked and yeah. had preps before where things clicked and then something happened yeah i could say that 2018 was great the yeah. whole home life was great things great. were going on yeah um sponsors were very supportive and um the olympia hype for me being on that stage for the last time also was great too and plus also jose was retiring so yeah. there's all these side stories yes. that were going on um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. And I stood on stage against the best, the best I you, and I could walk away and say, every person who's challenged me in that 212 class, um, I was uh, able to to defend and uh, remain the champ. So let me ask you one last question. Where will you put the saying down, if or when you get it? <laughs> uh, if you notice, I got family photos right here. Yeah, is that it? I've kept that blank for a reason. <laughs> Yes. And, and, and now, honestly, I come in here and I visualize certain things. Yes. There's an Arnold Classic trophy that used to be here, so if anybody asks why that space is missing. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? I don't know why that's there. This should be over there, the Arnold Classic trophy. I'll do that as we speak. This is the, the uh, British Grand Prix. We made, we custom made this so everything fits perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can barely take it out. Nice. That's the, the British Grand Prix. So there, that's the Arnold Classic Trophy. Um, yeah. I would say, if there's any other trophies that that I've won, these are all from all over the world. The uh, that San Marino Pro yeah. that I won to twelve. I beat the uh, bike door RIP. Um, that was my first ever show. Tim Gardner's Tampa Pro, obviously, mm-hmm. which happened this weekend. Yeah. Congratulations, Hunter Labrada, what a phenomenal rookie pro debut. I came second there, I came second in uh, in that show, see, and that's a Czech, Czech pro, uh, Prague pro, shall I say, mm-hmm. British Grand Prix trophies either side. And that's my first ever, this is my first ever uh, pro show trophy, Europa pro show, oh, that's nice. my second ever show. I beat George Farrer, I beat a few guys, your sub I remember him, phenomenal bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. That was my first ever 212 winner. And then you've got like other small ones, but this is one of the, the trophies that I'm very prideful of. This is the Rookie of the Year. Ah, uh, yes. And, and obviously you have one choice for Rookie of the Year, and um, that was, that was an amazing surprise. I didn't realize I was even entered into that. <laughs> and uh, I was announced in the gala that I won that uh, award. Yeah. And that was mind blowing. And I won Flex Image of the Year Award, which is, I think, how you represent the sport. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And I won then Athlete of the Year. So I managed to take up some other trophies as well, surrounding my 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 quest to to win in the, an Olympia trophy. Yeah. So it's. So when I come in here, I, can, I look around and it's not ego or anything like that. I'm quite humbled by what I've achieved. But uh, it's kind of surreal too because, you know, we, we were talking to Neil earlier about stories, you know, and again, not to, to rehash the same thing, but it's truly crazy when you're, you've done, I've done this since I was 19. 
I'm 36 now and my whole life has been devoted to this sport. Um, it's, it's not only uh, my job, but it's, I still see it as, as that hobby that I first, you know, got lured into when I was 12 and seen a, a, that book on Tom, Tom Platt's that blew my mind. And now, obviously, I, I've made a living from it. I've been able to to win the the, uh, the Olympia for my weight class, and and now we're going into pastures new. But uh, you know, th this is this this room is definitely. I, I don't know why athletes not to go off the point, but I don't know why athletes just put their the trophies into a little box and throw them under the bed or throw them in the garage, because they they. Whatever trophy that is, whether it's a second, fifth, or a first, it should be motivation for you to look at that and be like, wow, yeah, I remember that prep. Even though I didn't win, you know, I remember what I went through. And if you notice, I, I haven't hidden any of my my my, my past um, defeats away. I've got them on display because I'm proud yeah. of coming third. I'm proud of coming second. Yeah. Because it makes all these other ones when I, I won my first ever 212 and I ended my career undefeated yeah. that much more. Because had it not been for that and that and many other trophies, but I came fifth, third, second, um, I wouldn't be the, the dangerous athlete I am now on that 212 stage. So now we're going up into the open class. And when I work in here, and I work in here every single day, I, I, I don't need a picture on bodybuilding to pop up on my feed to be like, oh, this guy looks good. I gotta get my shit together. I just have to I look at uh, look at one or two of these trophies and be like, okay, you know, <laughs> you remember that process. It's just business as usual. It's time to fill up the space. <laughs> I know. But yeah. It's, That's it's, awesome. It, hey. it is, it's, it's, a, it's a very, um, I don't know man. I, I'm sure Jay, he, he, when he sits down and and looks around at his trophies and his accomplishments, and his front covers and etc. Probably feel the same way. He's, yeah. he's done it. He's achieved it. It's not. It's not defining his life. No. It, one show doesn't define his life, but this does show a chapter yeah. of what I've achieved. Yeah. And my goal is to to keep on going forward and keep on you know striving to build my legacy, my brand, and you know when when it's uh. The end of the chapter, I want to hopefully leave something on this earth that that be hard to be duplicated and uh, but but praised for, for more so the effort of what I put in. So yeah, I love it. it. Thanks, Lex. Awesome. Alright guys, here we got my pre-workout. This is a uh, cluster dextrin. So just the one of our full scoop is 30 grams. And here you have my pre workout. This is a Flex Lewis Signature Series line, Flexator. Woo, you hear that thunder? Yeah, I heard that. Maybe that was the unraveling of my product. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one scoop here because it is coming up to uh, 6 p.m. at night. If I put two, two scoops in, it's going to be a little bit too much caffeine. For me, um, but in this we've got um, all the bells and whistles, more of a focusing agent, um, a prompt product. Um, so it comes from the L-citrine, l and a little bit of caffeine for the stimulant. So this product obviously has been designed by myself and the team at Moto, and I'm very, very happy with the outcome of it. Not forgetting, little twist. See solve. Sea salt, we're limited on that. Look, you there, you go, there you go, there you go. Pre work has been going well over the last couple of weeks. There you go. And that is it. Open the cover real quick. We're going to show that. That's kind of cool. Can you? <laughs> it's cool. It's a mess, dude. Let me make sure. Look at that. No, it's nice and small. Let me see what we got up there. Come on, show me this. It's a secret. mess. It's a mess. That's and, okay. And Ali will be freaking out when she sees this on Jay Cutler TV. <laughs> but it used to be in, in a mid medical. condition. Yes. Oh, there you go. Nice. As you can see, quarantine has uh, has allowed me to uh, get away with this. But nice. I'm sure next time you come here, Dev, 
There you go. Boom. CBDND Yamamoto products. Very nice. Awesome. And uh, Monster is in the fridge. All right. So all the bells and whistles, right? Boom. Let's go. We're gonna go kill it. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Hello. Right out of the way, no reflections, nothing. Not your face, Yo! Hello. Right on time. Yes. Look at that. Hey, I have coming from an hour away in this fucking a It's a do it's it's like a storm out there. You were so down. Who are the for me? And you know what I'm like, I I so yeah, I, heavy foot. And I, I messaged him halfway, but I couldn't see on my back windscreen. It was so bad. I messaged, are you behind me? There was one me? when you were coming here too? Hammering it down from my house. Yeah. So the thing left. I messaged yeah. him, are you behind me? No reply back. So I wipe my window down. Rain is coming in. I wipe my window like this. Look, some old chick that's following me. Fucking day, was lost. And then we oh, finally oh, caught her. Like I, I Which was trying to avoid the hospitals from my house down Loxahatchee. Oh, Loxahatchee all the way down to y uh, Yamaro. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this guy, there was a person next to me that took the corner. There was submerged, like there was a huge puddle. Oh, yeah, because you went in the so yeah in the water and it just like just spilled all over the car. Came over the his whole hat. car. <laughs> it's when she went was this slow. You couldn't even see anything. That's dangerous from that. Yeah, I had to yeah. stop because I was like, I can't. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he survived. He, he took yeah. him. He yeah. took him a couple of wrong turns to catch up. Yeah, yeah. Just put it in your navy, right? I I, I didn't because I just I figured I was just following him, you know. Yeah, but it was you know massive, traffic is massive, yeah. Uh, oh well. I went uh, Sawgrass ninety five. As oh. soon as I got on ninety five, was it? Why did you do that for? It's a weird one. The way I always go. When you just do Sawgrass, turnpike, turnpike. <laughs> that would have been best today. Yeah. I figured you'd leave me right there. Yeah. But uh, we all made it, so that's good. Yeah, well, well you look outside now, it's probably sunny. Yeah, of course. Is it? It's not sunny. No, but you know what Florida is like. Oh, yeah, in, in 10 minutes it'll be yeah. like a beach day. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Come on. Come on. That's it. Finish it up. Yes, sir. 
Good. You stretch them. Fuck with that. Like people say about my forearms, John's got that Popeye. crazy thickness. Yeah, Popeye forearms. Okay. Okay, John, come on. Woo! Let's go, come on. Come on, Chris. Keep money, we've been here before. Thanks, mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. Come on. Okay. All season again. So let's be back in the gym. Come on! Okay. 
Come on. No. Come on, top five. Fifth. No. Come on. Four. No. Three. Come on, two more. Second. Last oh. one. Come on. Big one. Up. Oh. All you. Okay. Let's do it. Go. Go John. Whenever you have to. Oh. 
amor.